Oh, you look so nice. Oh, there it is. This is live. We are live. Sorry for the hold up, guys. I went and checked into a hotel because I was melting <laughs> in Paris. Yeah, we, we just got done recording, too. So she had a race. <laughs> Let me run to a hotel so I don't melt on the internet. <laughs> it's been horrendous. But Chloe yeah. looks great. She looks like she's not melting. Uh, I got my hair cut. Oh, is that what it is? It looks a little so good. shorter. Snowy calls me Paula Dean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good to see everybody again. Tina's here. Catherine's here. Yes, you're probably hey, miserable. Catherine. Well, Catherine. Catherine Watt. And Air Catherine in Texas. Air conditioning in Texas. France is lacking that in many places. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, I got to make a run for it. I can't get any work done and my dog is dying. Poor guy. <laughs> Catherine's, all the Catherine's. All the Catherine's. Hi, Tina. How is it in Portland? Claudine, is it nice? It's, um, I don't want to tell you because it's been like, uh, yesterday it was like 75. Today it's like, I still have the windows open. It's supposed to be, I think, maybe 80 today. I'm so but, jealous. <laughs> it's sunny. It's sunny. I don't, I don't mind if it's sunny. This is one of the, yeah. We're not talking right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No, but it was like that in Paris for a while. It's only these last couple of days. It's been insanely hot. And it's going to be like that for the next three days. Mm -hmm. So hopefully yeah. that's the end of it. I mean, August is already here. Summer is almost over already. Well, you hopefully know, you don't get that, what, 112 or 13 they got last year there. I shot a wedding that day last year. It was, wow. Yeah, yeah. I felt really bad for the groom. Oh, Elizabeth. Yeah, I'm sure it's hot in Florida. Oof, oof, oof. Oh, yeah. AJ's in Maryland. That's where I'm from. AJ Naki. Well, it's so nice to have everyone here. We're going to talk about Julia Child today. I'm sure you've all heard of her, even if you have not read her cookbook or seen the movie, but you probably have because you're probably a fan. Oh, and I just forgot. I was supposed to go grab something, but maybe I'll run out over and grab it real quick to show you at the end. Okay, at the end. Yeah. When I stay in Ohio, Florida. Everyone's remember, where is everybody from? I'm curious. We see Maryland, Florida, Texas, and Ohio. And then we have Portland, Claudine. Mm -hmm. And then hot Paris. Catherine's in Paris as well. Yes. Everybody's from all over. Where was Julia Child originally from? She was originally from Pasadena. That's right, California. Mm -hmm. I'm from Pasadena, Maryland. Very interesting. <laughs> oh, there you go. See, another connection. There's a Pasadena, Texas as well. Oh, there is. I'm sad that I know these things. Oh. <laughs> and a Paris. There, yeah, there's no Pasadena, Paris. No, it's just Santa Paris. Cruz. Oh, I bet it's lovely down there right now. I'm going to just open up our questions for today. I hope you guys are ready for more trivia today. So many good questions coming up. I know tomorrow we have the podcast episode comes out because to this week would be both her the anniversary when she died and also when she was born. So we wanted to release it um, close to that. So there'll be more more Julia tomorrow. And then hopefully you're all reading the book too. Yeah, I hope you guys will join our book club. It's a really good book. I'm really enjoying it. And I'm learning so much. I didn't really know much about Julia, sadly. So, Such a great book. Iowa. Oh, there's a Paris in Ohio. Latina wants to know which book we're reading. The My Life in France by Julia Child. That's what we're reading this month. Yes, you must read it with us. Oh, here we go. Okay. So I have my Julia questions ready. All right, so maybe Claudine wants to give us a brief intro. Of course, you all know Claudine already, but we're going to do some trivia questions as well, and you guys can chime in and give us some answers because we love hearing from all of you. Yeah, well, Julia, I absolutely love Julia Child, and um, I think I loved her long before that movie came out um, and before I really got fascinated and obsessed with French cooking and everything French, but I... Julia, I think, is such an inspirational person for so many people, especially that, you know, she was 39 years old when she decided she was going to take on this cookbook project and and take French less French cooking lessons and do all this. And she was 39 years old. So it's never too late. I was going to say, I think that's really cool that she kind of 
like redesigned her life at 39. Most people yeah. think you do everything in your 20s, but nope, she just changed everything at 39. Why she not? She did. Yeah. And her her um, relationship with her husband, Paul, if you're reading along in the book, there's no way, or if you've seen the movie, there's no way you can't just completely fall in love it's with Paul. Really it's just the sweetest, sweetest. I mean, it's like that, you know, it's that marriage that everybody would dream that they could have. They're just, it's so cute. And super supportive. Mm -hmm. Extremely supportive. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you guys read along with the book with us. Good book. You'll learn even more. But we're going to give you some little trivia questions now. And you have to try to chime in and give us your guesses. Even if you have no idea, you should still give us a guess because we're interested to hear yeah. from you. Um, and I guess I'll let Claudine read the first one. Yeah, well, we I tried to pick ones that was, wasn't going to give too much away in the podcast tomorrow. So I try to, you know, her she's very vast life. So um, the first question is, was Julia a spy for the CIA? This was really interesting to me when we talked about it on the podcast. Mm -hmm. I thought she was a spy, was she? Uh, mm -hmm. Beginning of everything. What do you guys think? Do you think Julia was a spy? She also, yeah. Catherine, Watt, Catherine Watt's going to know all these because I think she just finished those. She's finishing the book. <laughs> <laughs> Such a random thing, too. She was like her husband was. It's so fascinating, like that time period and what she was involved in. I think she lived like 12 lives. That's what it feels like. I think she did. She did, yeah. Maybe because she was so tall. <laughs> <laughs> She was larger than life. <laughs> six foot two. Six foot two. <laughs> this is a basketball player. Mm -hmm. All right. So everyone says yes, except Roma says no. Well, Roma's kind of right. So a lot of people like to say, oh, she was a spy. Oh, she played us. You know, she did all this stuff during um, the war. But actually, she worked for, she enlisted in the, in the OSS which was basically the precursor to what would end up becoming the CIA later on. And she enlisted in that because she was too tall to enlist in like the women's, um, like a, 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 a leg of the women's, of the army that was for women. They said she was too tall. I love that. To be a part of it. Yeah. So she ended up going to the OSS and that's where Paul actually worked for them. Paul was working for them as well, but she wasn't really a spy. She did um, kind of work with one of the head honchos. And so all of the secret documents came through her. So she was able to see all of the, the secrets, but I don't think she was, you know, what we think of as a spy, you know, lurking in corners and <laughs> you know, not the same <laughs> invisible ink and things like that. Um, Paul, Paul wasn't, Paul actually was working, um, when he worked for them, he, it was, uh, he was a photographer, but he also did a lot of work, um, doing, uh, putting together like, uh, photo exhibits, which you hear a lot about in the podcast, but he wasn't really, you know, it wasn't really a spy in, in the sense that we think, but it was came out a few years ago that it's like, Julia Child was a spy. <laughs> You just look at her and you don't think spy, but I guess that makes her a great spy if she was, because yeah. you're not supposed to be so obvious. But what, one thing she did do in there, which you'll have to listen to, you'll listen to the podcast tomorrow to hear about it. It's uh, it's pretty hilarious when uh, when we talked about it, the thing that she helped create during the OS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> learn about that. that won't be on our trivia, but it's, yeah. it's really funny what she created while she worked for the the government. She yeah, very special. It's pretty awesome. All right. So let's read the next one. What did Julia call her street she lived on in Paris? This is pretty good if you know the answer to this one. So she had a special name for her street. I She was pretty much just not pronouncing it right, just having fun with it from what I understand. But what would she call her street? In the movie, they had a scene in the dinner. It's like, oh, okay. Look at Catherine. <laughs> Does anyone else have any guesses about what she called her street in Paris? I mean, Catherine's reading the book. And has mm -hmm. Catherine already read the book, I think? I, I think she's probably just about finished it. Mm -hmm. I know she's been reading it. Nobody else has any guesses for us what she would call her street in Paris? I mean, you have to know a lot to... To know that. I think that Catherine, we'll go with Catherine. It was that is, that, <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. When they uh 
when they um when they arrive <laughs> undercover NBA player, she could. <laughs> She did play basketball in high school or in college. Um, but when she uh, when they first arrived in Paris in November 1948 and they were looking for a place to stay, they ended up finding this apartment. It's a two story, two two level apartment. And it was kind of at the very end, um, right behind. If you know where the is Assembly Nationale, the Palais de Bourbon, which is basically mm -hmm. if you're going straight across from Place de la Concorde, you go across the bridge um, to the left bank. It's just a little street down there. Um, it was Rue de la Université, and she called it Rue de Lou. <laughs> because of l'université? Yeah, probably because, yes, you know, I don't think, uh, she didn't have really have any French when she arrived there. Paul did because he had lived there before for a short time, um, but she didn't really have any any French with her at all. So I think Rue de Lou is pretty cute, but I'm sure if you were in Paris and said, you know, like asked where Rue de Lou was, they'd look at you or like you were a crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she, um, the apartment's really like the first trip I went there, I had to go find it. And I ended up like walking around and it's really close. It's really close to the assembly. So there's all these, you know, fancy people walking around waiting. And there's a little tiny kind of triangular little square in the center. And I kind of just waited until like nobody was around. And then I was walked up to it and I was like, oh my gosh. And I just like wanted to touch the door. I wanted to touch the same door that she had touched. And then right as I was touching it, the door, like I heard the click. And I was like, oh, no. And somebody walked out. And so then I was able to, like, just walk in. And then I got to stand there in the courtyard and look up. And you could see, like, the movie, the movie, um, the Julia and Julia movie, they, you know, they depict kind of their Paris two stories. And they do actually kind of show in the movie the big windows, which they do have. There was, I'll post a picture. Uh, but there were, when we do the podcast tomorrow, but there were two really big windows that were all glass. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was this two story apartment and they, it was all, I guess it was decorated just horribly. And so mm -hmm. like it, the walls were covered with like plates and things. So Paul took pictures of it and then they took things down. So when they moved back, they could put everything back to where it was. <laughs> it was so smart. They could rearrange the room and they wouldn't have to know that they changed everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish I would have done that with my apartment because we just moved into our new place and I took a lot of things off the walls because I was like, eh, I don't like that. And now I'm like, oh, I'm not going to remember where to put them. <laughs> <laughs> I just took pictures. Yeah. Was smart, Julia. All right, let's read the next one. Number three. How long did it take to write Mastering the Art of French Cooking? Her famed cookbook. How long do you guys think it took her to write that book? I mean, she wasn't a writer before, right? She was... No, she when she was in college, um, after she finished college, she went to New York because she wanted to be a big writer. And she thought she'd just go to New York and, you know, fall into something. And she ended up having a really hard time finding a job and then actually got a job um, working for like a furniture company doing their uh, doing some of their copy editing and stuff. So it was a far cry from her from her big uh from her big uh, lifelong plans of going to New York and the next thing you know, you know, becoming this writer, but she did do it. <laughs> she tried. I mean, mm -hmm. she got to Paris, which I find more interesting. Yes. In Paris feels so different. All right. So Tina said nine rewrite after rewrite. Catherine's a long time. Does anyone else have any guesses about how long it took her to write this cookbook? This famous book and she worked with two other ladies on it too right mm -hmm. yeah uh simka and louise louisette yeah because you don't really hear much about them it's always about julia yeah simka uh if uh, the movie actually depicts that they don't simka she and simka were very close and did most of the work on the book louisette didn't do as much but it was because louisette um she got divorced at one point she got remarried she married you know somebody that had like a castle and she kind of wasn't really she wasn't really as involved in it as uh, Simka and Julia were. Yeah. I guess once you marry a guy with a castle, you don't really have to do much else. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer guessed 10 years. Well, you're all very close. It took them nine years to write that book. Yeah. And she actually, um, it actually, she wasn't, it wasn't her idea. Simka and Louisette actually were writing it. They were writing it with a, um, and they're both French and they were working with a man in America that was supposed to be kind of doing the, you know, English version of it and working on that and they had a lot of problems with him and so they were kind of complaining about it and so they told Julia and then Julia thought oh well why don't I help you with that but then Julia being the one that spoke English 
fluently. She was the one who kind of really took on the huge brunt of it. And she would mm -hmm. test recipes like over and over and over and over. She would test them. She would test them with French ingredients. She would test them with obviously American ingredients, trying to get things, you know, that there's a difference between American flour and French flour, even back then. Wow. Um, so she did a lot of work. And I think they, she probably would never have stopped if they didn't make her. Yeah, a scientist basically. Yeah, the publisher when they did the second, the volume two, the the uh, um, publisher Judith Jones was basically like, "You have to, you have to have this done by this point." Yeah. <laughs> she was like, "Oh, we can't do that." <laughs> I mean, it, it is a big book, right? It's like, yeah, it's pretty thick. Yeah, there's two. Yeah, there's two versions, and they're both pretty thick. Do we know that if before her was there any other like? giant cookbooks of French cooking in English? Not really. There were what well, there wasn't really. She was trying to find some when she first got there and they couldn't, you know, there wasn't anything that was really in English. Um, so they were kind of the first ones to do it. And they, you know, they got, hit the, you know, they struck when the iron was hot because when it was released, it was when the Kennedys were in the White House. And, you know, they had a French chef and everything was very fancy then. And and everybody, you know, was really turning into kind of Francophile. So it was kind of the perfect timing, even though it was after the war, when everybody thought, oh, it's much easier just to have things in cans. And yeah. you know, that was really fancy. Like you got get canned products and boxed products and stuff like that was kind of the new thing. And it, you know, didn't take as much time cooking. And then here comes this cookbook. And at first, some of the publishers were like, this isn't, people aren't going to want to want this. This isn't what we're doing anymore. But. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's really interesting. Um, okay, so let's see. What was Julia's first meal in France? What do you guys think the first thing she ate? So she arrived to France with Paul, her husband. They're doing a little, like, road trip over to Paris, I guess, is what I understand. Mm -hmm. And uh what do you think the first thing Julia ate was? Do you think she was eating some duck, some fish? Did you get I mean, maybe some frog legs, you know, that's very. <laughs> escargot. Think, yeah, escargot. I've become a big fan of lamb and duck living in this country. It's oh, I love good. duck. Yeah, duck is so good. That's not something you eat in America that often. No, and every, anytime I see like the ducks at like the Jardin de Luxembourg, I just look at them like, I'm going to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make the connection. I try not to think about where my food comes from. <laughs> <laughs> I would be a vegetarian in that case. Yeah. All right, we got some guesses here. Duck, some oysters, some fish. They were in Rowan. Good, good, Danielle, you know. Danielle's reading the book too, I think. I think so. She's paying attention. Well, I'm going to have uh, Claudine talk about what it was because I get grossed out talking about it. So she did, um, she, Catherine is right. She did have, she had oysters and then she had um, a baguette and bread for like the very first, you know, French baguette and bread right there at the source. And then she had this sole meunier, which, um, you know, they did, they did a great, great, great scene in the movie where she's eating it. And I think that's pretty true to, to how she felt. Um, she just thought she had never, you know, that was just like completely changed her life. I mean, mm -hmm. it was like eating something she had never eaten before. It was like the most amazing, like the butter and just everything was just perfection. And that's when she decided she wanted to start cooking or she just. Yeah. Well, she, you know, kind of goes through and, um, you know, once they got there and, you know, here it is after the war and here's all these other, you know, American, you know, men there working and they have their wives with them. And, you know, they were doing bridge and, and hat making and she was taking French lessons and all those things, but they were just boring to her. And she was like, <laughs> I wanted to do more. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, in the movie, it was like, you know, so great. Stanley Tucci's like, well, what do you like to do? And she's like, I like to eat. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> yeah. So she, yeah, I mean, it was just the perfect thing. I mean, the, the, the thing I love about her so much and I, and that book is that when I read that book and how she describes Paris and the things that she loves in France, it's like, there's no better way that I could say it about myself. Like mm -hmm. it's just the way that she discovered it and just, it literally changed her life and everything about it. It was just like, Oh, this is, this is perfection. Yeah. I think it has an effect on a lot of people. We talked about this before you either hate or love Paris. I don't feel like there's much in between with how people feel about the city itself. Yeah. 
So I, she definitely fell in love quickly. And Danielle, yes, the butter. The butter is the best. <laughs> it's the butter. Happy cows. Yeah. Yes, yeah. there's nothing better than the butter in France. Exactly. People say, oh, the Irish butter. I'm like, nope, nope. <laughs> I love their salted butter here. It's delicious. Oh, so delicious. Very important part. If you haven't come to France, when you do, make sure you eat all the butter. All the butter. Demand it. Mm -hmm. I'll let you read the next one. Uh, so uh, whose wedding did Julia stand in as the maid of honor? Yeah, so it was a wedding. But apparently the maid of honor didn't show up or she was asked. Well, to they, be didn't, they didn't really have one. So they didn't have a maid of honor. Okay. Mm -hmm. so they asked her to be the maid of honor. It's someone famous, you guys. And the name you should probably know because you might, you know, have something to do with someone you're talking to right now. <laughs> <laughs> hint, 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 hint. <laughs> hmm. Who was she in the maid of honor in wedding? Think back to Paris that time. Catherine, look at Catherine. I mean, Catherine's so sure with the exclamation point. Yeah. Why would even let it? Her sister, Belinda. Oh, I like the name Belinda. Uh, yeah. Tina is saying, wow, because she's believing in Catherine, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so Catherine is right. It was a, the Hemingway son. It was Jack. Yeah. Yeah, so it was, in fact, Jack Hemingway. And uh, when Paul first was in Paris, he met Paul um, Paul Child. When he was there, he met Paul Maurer, who ended up marrying Hadley. It was Hadley's second husband. And so then when, when they get over there, when Julie is there with, that, with him, you know, they go and they meet him. They spent, like, Christmas with them. They spent, like, a New Year's Eve with them. Um, and so they actually became, you know, very good friends, which when I completely forgot that. I mean, yeah. I read the book three times, and I somehow completely forgot that fact. But they uh, they ended up, like, Paul Paul was over there. He Paul was actually, or I'm sorry, Jack Bum, or his Bumby, as most people know him. He was over there um, actually uh, for the OSS. And he was going to get married to this gal pick who was from, I think it was, I think it's Idaho and they didn't really know anybody in Paris. So they have this wedding. And so they asked Julia to stand in as the maid of honor. I love that. Yeah. And Sylvia beach was there and Alice B. Toklas was there. Uh, Gertrude Stein. I think it was after Gertrude Stein passed away, but it's, that was just such a crazy, crazy full circle moment that uh, Julia that actually Sir was a maid of honor in their wedding. It's like, what are the chances? Like, every, I know. Every, Paris was always a village. I feel like it is. It's very small. Oh, Bordier butter. Yes, that's the butter they have at Levant Comtois. <laughs> Angela, that's where the good butter is. Mm -hmm. Hemingways are connected. Yep. All right. So, what was the name of the cooking school Julia created with Simka and Louisette? So she created a cooking school. Someone may have mentioned this word earlier in our chat. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think she called her cooking school? There was her and the other two ladies that she's kind of liked. I guess she, she did. She like one more than the other. I guess or just like both. Yeah, they had. I mean, she and Simka kind of had issues. Kind of later on, Simka kind of didn't really want. You know, Julia's stardom definitely took off. You know, when she started doing TV shows and stuff, and and Simka, you know should I say, is a French woman. So. <laughs> <laughs> so they could be a little tough sometimes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Danielle's asking if Sylvia is Bumby's godmother. I think she was, right? Uh, no, Alice uh, Alice B. Toklas and Gertrude Stein uh, are, there, are his godmothers. Yeah, yeah, she said Alice Toklas. Yeah. Very cool. All right, guys. So the name of the cooking school was Le Trois Gourmand. Le Trois Gourmand. Yeah, so and she, Gourmand. she she met them um, in a cooking school that or a cooking group that she joined. And Paul was actually a part of it too. Paul would um, was like the men would go on their side and talk about wine and stuff like that, and the women would go on the other side. But uh, Simka, she met Simka and Louisette there. And they ended up deciding like, we should just, you know, there's, there's all these women here, these American women, and they don't, you know, they don't have anything to do. We should just start a, start a cooking class. And they did. And it was 20 francs a person, which is, you know, practically nothing. And they did it in her home 
at her in their her apartment. And so they had these little cooking classes. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, they did in the apartment. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Oh, Steven said he got to talk to Juliet's <gasps> 90th birthday. Oh, oh my gosh. It's been such a great experience. San Francisco. Gosh, she's still with it at 90. Was she, was she chatting well? I, that's a, she seems to be pretty with it. I mean, she started writing um, My Life in France with her nephew in the last two years of her life. Wow. Yeah. So she was with it till the end. That's pretty mm -hmm. cool. She worked with her nephew on the book, too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Things were much cheaper back then. Mm -hmm. 20 bucks for a cooking class. Can't find that now. Unless it's online. Zoom. <laughs> yeah. It's not unless it was a Julia, you know, it, or it was a... Um, you know, with Julia Child. Where is our, are we at? Is Molly here? I wonder if Molly's probably melting in Versailles. Our yeah. modern day Julia Child. Yeah, Molly's definitely melting in Versailles as well. And yeah, Molly, I'm sure she's melting. In school as Julia Child as well. Mm -hmm. She was the Cordon Bleu. She is our, our local new Julia. Yes. <laughs> All right, I'll let you read the next one, Claudine. Uh, so who was known as America's first foodie and friend of Julia? It's not in the book. <laughs> yeah, you book readers. It America. kind of is, but calling them calling them that is not. America's first foodie and a friend of Julia. Obviously, it's a famous person. Mm -hmm. And who would be the first foodie in America? Molly does give excellent classes. Yeah, met so her. adorable. Paris years ago, and then she was living in Strasbourg for a while, and now she lives in Versailles and gives cooking classes normally at her place, but with everything happening, she's doing them online, so they're very cool. If you have time, check out Molly Wilkinson. She's yeah. Wilkinson cooking classes, Versailles. You'll find her. She's her Instagram's all amazing. Yeah. she's. I mean, her pictures are very pretty of food, mm -hmm. too. James <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> Debbie knows things. So maybe Claudia. I know can... why she knows that too. <laughs> <laughs> it was, in fact, James Beard. And uh, I had to throw in a question with James Beard. James Beard is actually was from Portland, Oregon. And he um, was born in Portland, Oregon. And his family spent his he and his mom spent his um, summer in Gearhart, which is a teeny tiny um, beach town on the coast, which my family um, had a house since before I was born. My grandparents bought a house. So I have this very tight, you know, link with James Beard in a lot of ways. But um, he was basically known as America's first foodie. He kind of started doing um, a TV show before Julia ever did. Didn't really, it didn't really go. He didn't really have the, the following that Julia had. Charisma that, Ju that Julia did. But he was amazing that there's the James Beard Awards, which is basically like the Oscars for chefs and cookbook writers. Um, James is, was amazing. But he when she first after the first Mastering the Art of uh, French Cooking was published, she was in New York and somebody entered. They she they introduced each other. And so he basically was like, oh, you've got to, you know, go see this person, go see that person, talk, you know, talk to him. Because the book at the time, it wasn't like today as far as, you know, a PR machine. And so mm -hmm. she, he basically got her into being able to talk to directly with chefs and people that would love the book and help her sell it. Um, later down in the years, towards the end of his life and her later years, he did a cooking school in down at the coast here in Oregon. And she would come down here and do cooking classes with him. And it just basically blows my mind. And I was, I mean, well, I probably was, I don't even know if I was even born yet, but just to think of the fact of Jane Spirit and Julia Child giving cooking class, cooking lessons just kills me. That's so amazing. What a great connection. And also in Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. Jacques was her close chef friend. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> yeah, Jacques Pen was also a very good friend of hers um, through her whole life. And uh, his daughter, Claudine, was living in Portland for a little while. So he came here and did a book signing. And so I went and the whole, you know, he's talking at the beginning. He was, he was here promoting his biography that he wrote. And he was just talking about, he's like, well, well, Julie and I. Oh, and Julie and I. And I was just like, just <laughs> Julie and I? <laughs> Well, they're friends, you know, it's just, I know, but it's just like, that's just, it's so crazy that, you know, but his daughter was there too. And when they opened the book to sign it and they put a post posted on it, it said Claudine. And she was like, 
is that your name? And I was like, yeah. She's like, you're the only person Claudine I've ever met in the United States. <laughs> you're the only Claudine I know. Yeah. <laughs> you're the Claudine. All right, guys. How long did Julia and Paul live in Europe? So do you have any guesses for how many years that Julia and her husband lived in Europe? What do you think? I mean, she took her nine years to write that book. So like, was she writing it in France the whole time? Or do we know? How long do you think they lived together in Europe? I mean, what an interesting life just to be able to like in between San Francisco and France. I mean, so many experiences. Never long enough, right, Tina? to Claudine. <laughs> yeah, Julia was not ready to leave. I remember we talked about this. She yeah. wanted to stay, but because of uh, Paul's spy work, they had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Like Paris is such a transitional city. Like most people only live here three to four years if it's based on work. A lot of times when I meet new friends here, I'm like, so how long are you staying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to stick around. I'll say forever. <laughs> yeah, you're sticking around. We, we can be friends, Claudine, because you're yeah. not leaving. <laughs> uh, we got some guesses here. Let's see. 20 years, Danielle. Oh, wouldn't years. that be perfect? Got some good guesses here. All right. So it was six years in Europe. It was six years. Yeah, they first came to Paris, um, as we know. Um, they went to Paris, and then they moved him down to Marseille. And so they were down there for a while. Then they moved him to that moved them to Germany, which she was really not pleased with at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then they they uh, their last their last uh, port of call we could say was Oslo. And then after that, that's where he kind of was like, I'm kind of tired of doing this and wanted so they went back but when they were in marseille she you know did all this you know was trying to do research on the book and you know she'd go to fish you know the fish french fit there's some french fish that you can't get in the u.s or there's not the equivalent and stuff like that um but yeah she she didn't like she liked paris of course the most in marseille too but marseille paris, is cool. yeah yeah but she did yeah there uh we'll we'll come up to that one in a minute danielle <laughs> <laughs> let claudine read the next one uh the next well, let's see. okay what holiday did paul and julia celebrate every year with cards to all their friends i think this is super cute and just really says a lot about their relationship as well mm -hmm. so they all they always celebrated this holiday and they always sent cards to their friends what holiday do you think it was you think it was Christmas, Thanksgiving, <laughs> Flag <laughs> Day, Flag Day, Groundhog Day, Columbus Day. <laughs> you guys are too smart for me. <laughs> yeah, so much love. You guys are good guessers. It was Valentine's Day. It was Valentine's Day. It's so cute, too, because uh, if you have the My Life in France book, they have pictures in there of their cards. And it was so cute. There's one where they're, like, in a bathtub. And then she, she Julia loved rubber stamps. She loved to buy rubber stamps. And so <laughs> they would have, like, a special stamp made and have it, like, they'd stamp it on there. And then they'd write, like, postcards and stuff. And they'd always send them to all of their friends. And then they would have, like, a little dinner every time on Valentine's Day for their friends. And um, it's just, like, just so the cutest thing ever. I think that's really sweet. It really says a lot about their relationship. Like, how cute are they? They never yeah. had kids. And they just, like, really focused on each other and supported each other all the way. Yeah. Morning. They're just the cutest. They are the cutest. We love them. Mm -hmm. How many episodes of The French Chef did Julia film? So, you know, she had her cooking show. It was on PBS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, how many episodes do you think she was filming? I think what was really interesting about that, it was basically live. Like, she couldn't really do much editing when she made the show. Yeah, I don't think they did. Yeah, because yeah, she, she uh, embraced mistakes. She said to never po apologize for your mistakes. Yeah. So if something didn't turn out right, it's just like, well, that's, you know, if it didn't look perfect, it was, that didn't really, really matter to her. I think that's really sweet. And also probably why people loved her because she was like relatable. Mm -hmm. So how many episodes of her cooking school or cooking class online on the TV? 
<laughs> Internet online. I don't know where we are now. I love the quote. I have any guesses? How many did you watch, Claudine? Have you seen them all? I've seen quite a few of them quite a long time ago. You could yeah. you could actually uh, I I double checked to look and I put a link. It'll be on my website tomorrow for the show notes. I put a link that you can actually um, stream them all on PBS. You have to be a member of it, but uh, you know, I think I donate like five dollars a month or something to PBS so I could watch them for free. Um, cool. But it's pretty fantastic. It is really cool. You can watch all your Julia. How many years? So it was more than three hundred and fifty episodes she recorded of that show, the cooking yeah. show. She the was, uh, yeah, they did 10, 10 seasons of uh, The French Chef, and she was on TV from 1963 to 2000, wow. and because she was on so many different TV shows. She did 11 different TV shows. She did one with Jacques Pepin. Um, she did, she did so many of them. So she was on, I mean, that's a long time. That's 37 years on television. That's crazy. I'm wondering, like, are there any other cooking schools that have been on for that long? Yeah, I don't know. But it all happened like that's not it didn't it just kind of happened by chance, too, because they uh, the WGBH, the PBS channel in, in Boston, wanted her to come on. And it was a uh, um, uh oh, what happened? It says Debbie was blocked. <laughs> um, it uh, it said that um, she well, they wanted her to come in and say um, there's like, oh, well, we're giving you 30 minutes. And it was on this TV show um that that was about books and it was like called like what are they reading or something like that and mm -hmm. so she she says well we're going to give you 30 minutes instead of 10 and she thought well, what am i what am i going to do for 30 minutes i mean 30 minutes on tv is it's a long time so she thought okay well i'll bring you know my copper pan and i'll bring some eggs and a whisk and, and you know and some other things and a and a pan and and mushrooms and stuff and so while they were talking she's just there just whisking up some <laughs> eggs and started and like you know put them on the hot plate before that she was on uh, the today show and she got there and her they were going to make something but they also had this horrible hot plate and they were like she was like, I can't use that because it won't keep the heat consistency of the pan. Yeah. So when she went to WGBH, they had it all set up. And so she made that. And so afterwards, um, they just got inundated with letters saying, you know, like, oh, we, you know, where is we want more of her? We want more TV shows. Show that again. So they contacted Julia and said, hey, could you come in and do a few, you know, a few more like let's just do like a few half hour episodes and she was like okay and the rest is history and that's how she got her own cooking show yes how wild is that I mean, yeah is, i mean that was her life that's how everyone got to know her really yep but she yeah you could it's a it's really funny like the old ones in black and white and stuff and uh you know it's just definitely i mean it's a her style and her charisma that makes you just fall in love with her too. But I think tomorrow, I think on the website or my Instagram post, I found a photo that of her behind. And then the floor is just covered with these different people. Like men are there and they're handing things up to her. Like, you know, here's this and handing things up to her and they're down be uh, below the counter. So you can't see them. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. I love that. She had men um, working yeah. for her. <laughs> All right, guys, this is the last question, and I'll let Claudine read it. What's the name of the house in Provence that Paul and Juliet built? They built a house in Provence. How dreamy is that? And we learned that it was a friend who basically gave them the land. To build the yeah, house. Simca. Simca. Um, they went to go visit Simca down there with um, Simca and her husband, and he had had um, – pretty good piece of land with a house on it that was had been in his family and Paul and Julie were like oh this is so great I would love to come back here you know sometime or get a house and they said well why don't you just build something here they're like just take a corner and you could build it and they had an agreement that said um if you like when they were done with it that they would just give it back to the family so it wasn't you know there wasn't any paperwork or anything it was just like when they were done here it is and now you actually rented on airbnb yeah we were talking about that is, is it crazy expensive it's actually not that bad I, i'll have it it's it'll be linked on my website tomorrow 
It's actually not that. I think it was like, I want to say it was like $450 a night or something. Yeah. I mean, to, you know, there's nothing of hers in there anymore because it'd been a long time, but, you know, they definitely changed it and put like the peg boards up with the pans <laughs> like Julia had. But I mean, you're sleeping in the place that Julia, you know, once slept and cooked. You, know? say, you can take in all her energy. Yeah, <laughs> you could. That, that would be amazing. All right. So Cheryl wins, guys. She she knew the name. And why does it choose that? Yeah, La Pichon is um, is little one in Provençal. So, mm -hmm. but they would call it, I think, La Piche. La Piche is oh. what she always called it because she couldn't call, you know, Rue de Lou. <laughs> she wasn't great with the French accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's really cute. Actually, I follow. They have an Instagram page too. Oh, and well, they yeah. actually do cooking classes out of it as well. That's so smart. So you have all that on your page that people. Yeah, can check it'll out. be on my website tomorrow morning. Claudinehemingway.com. Yes. Very cool. Yeah. And they built it exactly, Danielle. They built a little house and their little love shack in the Provence. A little love shack in Provence. Yeah. It's in like above Grasse, near Grasse. So pretty. I mean, the south of Paris is just dreamy and so easy to get there from Paris. Jump on mm -hmm. a high speed train. Don't recommend yeah, it right I'm now. There to see them. <laughs> Do you have a museum there as well? There, No, there's not. There isn't a museum. Yeah, I don't imagine mm -hmm. doing my museum for an American woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean most people, most French people don't know who Julia Child is. Yeah, I mean, there's there's still a lot of people that don't know who French people that don't know who Ernest Hemingway is. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think over time, you know, the least, but Julia Child. And if you say like, oh, she was this, you know, French cook, they're like, I'll answer the bedrooms because she snored. The love is broken. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. And if you want to learn more about Julia Child, um, the podcast will be released tomorrow. So when you wake up in the morning, you can listen to her whole life story. You know, Claudine is always full of so much information that no one can find, but Claudine, it seems like. So <laughs> listen up to that. And um, the links will be in the show notes if you want to go to Claudine's website to get more information about the Airbnb and all that good stuff. Yeah, tomorrow. And uh, to, and then so we have uh, Julia tomorrow. And then next Monday will be Zelda. Yes, Zelda's my favorite. Zelda Fitch. I know this month has kind of turned into um, the Americans in Paris month. It's true. It's <laughs> very true. Yeah, I that. yeah. Thank you ladies for joining us. We try to do this every two weeks. So I don't know that we've decided for our next two weeks, have we? Oh, I did. Oh, you decided. Okay. So yes, because I just want any excuse I can to talk about her, but it's going to be um, Rose Valland and the Women of the Resistance. Oh, this is fun. Because it's right. It's uh, two weeks from now. It's basically like a day or two before the liberation of Paris. Her? And I love Rose Valland so much. I just want to talk about her forever. <laughs> I completely agree. Why would we not? I didn't learn about her until you, because you bring all these fascinating women into my life. So yeah, today we just recorded one about Joanna, Joanna Bonger Van Gogh. Yeah. We're not really sure how we're supposed to say her name. And yeah, I'll say her name. <laughs> yeah. So I want to say it the French way, but it's uh, she was Dutch. Dutch so, yeah. and she was another fascinating, fascinating woman. So many fascinating ladies that are finally getting some spotlight. Through the voice of Claudine. Send her <laughs> all of your vibes too. We love everyone for joining us. We, we know you're busy, busy people. So thank you for taking a time to chat with us and listen to Julia Child's podcast tomorrow. And if you want to listen to a living creative in Paris of today's world, then you can tune in on Wednesdays. Yeah. Oh, and the thing I was forgot to show, I'll, I'll post a picture of it tomorrow. But um, my grandmother gave me one day, she was like, oh, here's these cookbooks. Do you want them? And it was the cookbook that Julia wrote after Mastering the Art. And it was the French chef. So it was based on the TV show. And she gave it to me. And I was like, oh, thanks. And then one day I sat down and opened it up. And inside a huge letter says, bon appetit, Julia Child. And so I called grandma up and I was like, where did you get this? And she's like, oh, well, she was in town doing a book, you know, she was in town doing um, a book signing at Meyer and Frank or someplace like that. And so I stood in line and I went to go see her and I got that book. So she got it signed by Julia? Yeah. And she didn't like when she gave it to me, I, I don't think I opened it for like months and months. And then I opened up, but I'll post a picture of it tomorrow. So I don't have I to go run. What she was about that. That's hilarious. Your I just about died when I saw that it has Julie, like Julia signed the book. <laughs> All right. Definitely post a picture of that. I will. 
do that. And everyone mm -hmm. tune in in two weeks. We'll put everything on the webpage once more. And we love chatting with all of you. We'll see you then. See you later. Al <laughs>